Hello, everyone. Have a good evening to all of you. It's great to be with you tonight. We are really excited for this conversation. We're going to dive right in. So uh, we are here tonight to have a conversation around Anna Kerrigan's beautiful film, Cowboys. If you haven't watched it yet, you've got to. Uh, it's about a father, played by actor Steve Zahn, who works to liberate his young trans son, played by actor Sasha Knight, by taking him to Canada. And a frustrated female detective starts to investigate, and then she learns that the child's situation with his family is more complicated than she thought. So we are here with a Cowboys creator and star. So please help me to welcome writer, director, Anna Kerrigan. Hi. Hello, actor Steve Zahn. Welcome. Hello. And Sasha Knight. Hi. How is everybody? Great. Good. 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 It's good to be here with you all. And uh, I'm just going to let everyone know that if you need closed captioning, please, if you're on YouTube and need closed captioning, please head over to our Facebook page. You can get closed captioning if you need it there. And I'll leave that reminder up for folks who joined a little late. So, uh, Anna, I'm going to start with you. What was it that first inspired you to tell this story and made you want to get it out in the world? Well, I spent a lot of time in Montana as a kid, and during a sort of transitional moment in my life, I started writing the script for Cowboys because I, I missed that part of Montana. And I just started with a father and son on horseback, and I knew they were trying to get away from something and that they were outlaws of some sort, and I, I wasn't sure why or you know where they were headed. And I just continued to write and, and gradually, you know, the characters sort of revealed themselves to me. And I learned that Troy, who's played by Steve, you know, is this really complicated, uh, but like lovely charismatic father who has mental health issues. And he's incredibly close to his son, who's transgender and struggling with his mother's inability to accept that. Great. And that's a really, so, it's interesting that you brought in the tr a transgender storyline into the middle of that. Was there something personally that sparked that storyline or just sort of um, in the world or? It was, I think that for me, I mean, there was nothing overt that, that sparked that specifically for me. I mean, I did start thinking about, you know, like, oh, who are the outlaws in rural America? And, mm -hmm. you know, something that I experienced going to you know back and forth between montana and los angeles where i was raised is you know i fell in love with a lot of the people i fell in love with the way it looked and just the experiences i had there um but once i started becoming a teenager i w realized like oh these people aren't that accepting or some of them are i mean there really is a range it's a spectrum it really is person to person sure. um but that's sort of where it started for me that's sort of how i started figuring out that Got it. I was transgender. So, so on your side, Steve and Sasha, a question for both of you. What made you read the script and say, I want to do this? I'll take either, either one of you first. Who wants to go first? Go with Sash. Okay. So I was only doing voiceover at the time, and I wasn't allowed to do on camera. But Joe was trans, so my mom said I could do it. And I was like, yes. Um, and then we read the script and we were like, wow, this is a really good script. And we we're like, well, obviously we're auditioning for it. <laughs> but that was actually after we auditioned for it. Like we were like, we were like, yeah. <laughs> and then I got a call back and I went in the room and yeah, then I booked it. Amazing. And what was that moment like when you found that out? I was so happy. I started crying. Good, good crying. <laughs> we just want to... <laughs> Anna didn't make you cry. You were happy. Is what you're okay. I'm like, I hope not. <laughs> and Steve, what resonated with you about this script and this story? I don't know. It's, it's very simple. I mean, I was floored by it and I was very moved by it. And I, I could picture it in my head and the character was amazing and I had to play it and you don't always react like that to a script but it was one of the few where I was like I don't care when this goes I don't care where how this I, I have to do this 
And that's hard to explain, but you sometimes have a connection to something and sometimes you don't. And this one I did. I thought it was beautiful. As a dad yourself, do you find there were parts of this that really resonated for you? I mean, think any parent who watches this movie, that. Yeah, of course. I mean, if you're not, if you have kids and you're not affected in that way, then there's something wrong. I mean, I, I yeah, I had a, a, a real kinship to it. And, and uh, that was a huge, a huge factor, I think. I, again, this, the relationship between these two was um, beautiful and simple and complicated. Um, and yet it was, it was this real simple love, childlike relationship that they had that was just um, really um, beautiful to me. Now I have to ask all of you, we're all three of you. So Westerns are not sort of typical now. Um, we don't see a lot of those narratives right now. Were the three of you sort of enamored of that genre prior to working on this film? Have this, has this sparked a love to dig deeper into? I mean, there's, I wouldn't call it obviously a traditional Western film in that traditional way, but there is an aspect of it that really sings to those old, old films that resonated with me when I watched it. Yeah, I mean, I think there's certain Westerns that I'm not like, I've never been obsessed with Westerns. I think that for me, the sort of like Western tropes of the movie really came from what was in the hearts of the characters, you know? I mean, it's in a, it's it, a Western as much as these two characters want to be cowboys, want, you know, consider, they, wa they want to be on the run and one with nature and find a place where they're accepted. And it all just sort of like, I don't, I didn't like go about it trying to make a Western. Like I love movies that are Western-ish, like, you know, early Peter Bogdanovich, but that's not like true Western, you know, there's just sort of like Western vibes to it. Um, but yeah, I have watched, I mean, I, I watched more as I was prepping for sure, just in terms of visual references, but that wasn't like where it came from for me. I think Westerns are, are always out there. They're always being redone. In a, I mean, it's our story. It's our myth. It's the American myth. And whether it's a period Western or where, whether it's modern, this, this idea of nature and ex, the expanse of nothing. And, and, and these characters, I mean, yeah, they, they want to be in a Western. Right. Which is, which is the point, you know. And 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 once they start their journey, they are they are actually living it, which is thrilling and also frightening at the same time. For both of them, how about you, Sasha? Um, I <laughs> yeah, I'm not that big of a fan of westerns either. <laughs> what? I'm gonna give you a list. The truth revealed. <laughs> But I like how it has the, it's centered around the Western feel because it kind of makes it, so like Steve and Anna said, they, they want to be in a Western. Like they kind of like Joe wishes that he was in a Western. <laughs> and that's why I like, cause it's very much Joe's personality to like escape into like that western reality like be a cowboy so yeah <laughs> i love it so now we can ask the follow-up question i'm sure it was great working with the horse how was it working with steve and jillian it was amazing <laughs> um like basically whenever we weren't on set we were hanging out <laughs> um and me and steve went there to montana two weeks early so we hung out all the time and that's not a bad thing that's a good thing that might have been <laughs> it was great uh it, it was just awesome and they're so much fun and they're amazing actors and it was just so awesome if you could pick one thing that you learned from steve while you were there working what would that be i'm sure you learned many things can you pick one thing that really stuck out to you well totally not acting related is quite all right 
Um, how to play pool. I can also say something that is acting related, <laughs> but that's not acting related. <laughs> but you did teach me that. Um, <laughs> good skill. Good, good skill to have. I don't know why, but it is. And Steve, in reverse, how was it working with Sasha, working with a young actor? And oh, it was brilliant. It was so much fun. And so, you know, Sasha is such a natural and really relaxed and present and listens, all those simple things that you need to be a good actor. They're very simple. Listen, listen, you know, and, and because we knew each other really well and spent time together, we were comfortable and, and um, it was a, it was a blast. I mean, I learned just as much from, from Sasha as hopefully Sasha learned from me. And that's just from, from being present and, you know, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it was really fun. I mean, there are, there are times, you know, it's really fun, especially during a Western. I've done a few where you're on a horse and you don't see the cameras and you don't see the crew and you don't see anything and you know you're being filmed, but you really feel like you're there. You really feel like you're, you know, and we had so many moments like that that were just really fun. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Your bond was really clear. I've watched the movie twice now and your bond was really clearly evident. You know, I mean, it really, I don't think that kind of connection intimacy is something between two people, something you can easily fake. I know it's called acting and it's trying to create that reality, um, but it was clear there was a care there that had been built between the two of you. That is really lovely. You know, the production and Anna really put a lot of value on that and, and had us come out early which I thought was really important to the success of the. So Anna, can you, so Anna, can you talk a little bit about how you cast the film and how you found your actors and. Yeah, of course. Um, well, Steve was the first actor that we attached. And I think we attached, did we attach you like two years before we shot? It was something crazy. It was a long time. It was a long time. Um, and you know, we, we sent it to Steve and his reps and, and they read it. And then Steve and I had a, a conversation. We like tried to do zoom for two seconds and then we we're like, Oh, this is awkward. And of course, like now it's like, everything is zoom. and then we got on the phone and you know, Steve, I don't want to give away his location, but he lives on a horse farm. And uh, and he was at one point he started like apologizing to me about the noise and I was like I don't know what you're talking about and he's uh, what what's the noise and he said oh I'm feeding the animals and I was like this this guy is perfect like <laughs> I was like yes um, so you know he once he signed on we would you know talk about the script and talk about his character but it was all it wasn't until we really had everyone else lined up and we sort of like went you know one to one until we found Jillian and and Anne and then we saved our lovely uh Joe casting for for the end cuz we once we actually had a you know money and a time to go cuz we you know we needed a kid who was young enough that he would believe his dad and trust in him to like go on this crazy journey. Um, but old enough that he could be somewhat independent and fire a gun and, and you know, whatever else. So for Joe, it was obviously, you know, it was trickier. I think whenever you're casting a kid, it's, it's a, it's a search. And it was really important to me to cast a non-binary or transgender kid. I worked with this, casting director Edie Belasco. We did like a, a big national search. And when I say big, it's like we hit up a lot of people, but because of our budget, it was Edie and I, you know, like we couldn't even afford to give her an assistant. Um, so we went through agencies and did the sort of normal casting channels. And then I think like, I think PFLAG might have reposted our casting notice. I think we did. Yeah, um, a bunch of nonprofits that, you know, work with trans kids and their families. But we also reached out to summer schools and, you know, theater camps, community theaters, like really anyone that we could think of that might, you know, have, might be hiding our Joe from us. And um, 
you know, we narrowed down the list. I worked with a few people over Zoom and luckily Sasha was based in LA. And as soon as I watched his tape, I was totally floored and and like, you know, I don't really believe in God, but it was definitely one of those like, thank God this kid exists. <laughs> <laughs> moments. Um, and, you know, I got, I, Edie worked with him for a while and then I came in and worked with him and I was just, I was so happy and so relieved that we found him. Thank See, you, Seth, <laughs> for existing. <laughs> Thanks for just being you. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Just showing up and being you. So speaking of being you, so I would love to hear from you, Sasha, how, as you're comfortable to talk about it, how do you feel like your own personal journey or story related to Joe? You know, how is your, how are you similar or different from Joe? Well, I, well, I didn't grow up there, but I lived in a small town in Colorado for four years, I think. Um, and also Joe's trans, obviously, and I'm trans. And also me and Joe came out, well, I came out when I was like 10. And I don't exactly know like the exact timeline when Joe came out. I think it was like 11 or 10, <laughs> but uh, I came out around the same time and just, we kind of had like the same personality and then the exact opposite personality because um, I'm very extroverted and like Joe's very introverted. I have a lot of energy and Joe's kind of like does at like some parts of the movie, um, just like mostly on the adventure. But also I think we're very similar in the fact that um, Joe's very, I tried to portray Joel very um, so, soulful. And I don't actually know if I'm soulful, but my mom told me I am. So <laughs> I guess. I would say, so what does that mean to you to be soulful? You, you, you certainly seemed soulful in your story. I mean, you, you seem to embody that word. So good job. Um, <laughs> When you were trying to capture that, what did that mean to you? It meant mostly just to sort of just, because Joe wants to go on this adventure and be, I think Joe does it, is very immature and very mature at the exact same time mm -hmm. in, in certain ways, which is what I personally think is soulful because Joe can be like this, kid who's like like really smart and like seems like old and knows a lot like an old soul and then at the exact same time they can be like really dumb and a kid because <laughs> they're a kid um at the same time but that's kind of how i wanted joe to be is just have a lot of layers in that type of way i think you captured that beautifully, minus the word dumb. I wouldn't say <laughs> dumb, inexperienced, uh, wide open to possibilities. Steve, yeah. I want you to talk a little bit, you talked a bit about you know the similarities with those characters. I think, Anna, you talked about it too, that there's a, even though they are father and son, there's a, a similarity to that approach to the world and these characters. Yeah, yeah, they both are very, very good. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, no, they're very similar. And that's what I think is so um, really c compelling about it. I mean, I, 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 I feel a kinship with that in a way. I mean, my, my kids, I, I was the guy that was fun. I was the guy who was, you know, if it snowed six inches, you know, I tied a rope behind a four wheeler and, you know, went out and did crazy crap. <laughs> <laughs> and you know <laughs> they got bruised up and I'd get in trouble I was shy, <laughs> right I was, I was entertaining so I, I had I, I felt like that's who he was and he, you know and he has he's bipolar and, and when he's when he's manic he's um if if you're on the same plane he's a ball man he's a fun dude to hang out with but if you're not maybe not so fun you know um, but just this simplicity in his acceptance too, I thought was so beautiful. I mean, you know, I think we get, we get, 
you know, we, we, we get bogged down with this need to understand someone and you don't really need to understand someone fully to accept them or love them, you know? And I think that is the message, you know, and for all his faults as a father, he, he, he truly accepts and he truly loves unconditionally. And, you know, it's great. I think that's what spoke to P flaggers and a lot of P flaggers have watched this movie now. And that's what they keep saying that for them at the start of a journey with an LGBTQ kid, with a trans kid and non-binary kid that, you know, you can love and affirm them even if you don't entirely understand, like that's fine. You know, you can start with love and then learn as you go along and just meet them where they are. And I think that part of this story so resonated in your to the relationship between the two of your characters and just finding your finding your way together in this journey is so I mean it's, it's it was spot on from from that kind of storytelling perspective and from the way you both captured it so Anna you really covered two pretty big serious topics in this movie. I mean, you know, you, you know, a character who is dealing with, you know, behavioral health, mental health issues, you know, a, a character who is, is trans and all that that encapsulates. Um, was it hard? Um, I mean, I know you must have done a ton of research, obviously, in, in both of these issues to capture them, you know, so yeah. well, we've heard from people accurately. Um, what was your experience writing those stories with capturing topics like that? Well, when I, you know, in terms of writing Joe, I, on my first few passes, I, I might have Googled a few things, but I just was trying to approach it as like, this is a kid who's not being accepted and just tried to put myself in his mindset. And then once I had done a few passes and it was in a place where I was sharing it with people in general. I shared it with Nick Adams at GLAAD. He's um, great. Yeah, he's great. Um, and the Montana Film Office had connected me with, um, they were really awesome. I mean, we got a basically like a government grant, which is, as you know, with like all the legislation that's happening in Montana, sort of surprising. Um, that is but, surprising. That's yeah. unbelievable, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really a purple state, you know, but I, I think it was a bit of a coup that they gave us government money wow. um, and they flew me up and they set up this dinner with uh, four transgender people who lived in Missoula, most of whom I think three out of four of them came out as adults and I we had a really great dinner and all, I mean, it sort of reiterated to me, it's so different to come out. Uh, I mean, obviously it's family dependent and you can have a, a, a good or a bad experience anywhere, but, you know, speaking to these people who came out as adults in specifically in Montana, it, I was like, oh, this is, this is really important. And I, I stayed in touch with one of those people who is a therapist specifically to trans youth in Montana. Wow. And she was really helpful uh, in terms of talking to me about you know, the specifics of that experience. And, and then in terms of, um, you know, Troy's bipolar, I, I know a lot of people who are bipolar. And so that was sort of the beginning for, I mean, I just was, you know, pulling on my experiences, what I have witnessed of, of manic episodes. And, and one thing that Steve and I talked about a lot was, you know, there's not like some universal way that people like act when they're bipolar. It really is specific to the person. And, you know, I think Steve did such an incredible job of making, you know, Troy's struggles unique to him and true to who he was. It, you know, it's like you see him sort of, like he said, like, he's so fun and then it just like it like amps up just too much you know and then suddenly it becomes catastrophic right um, but it's almost like he is explode who he is is just sort of expanding and exploding um and i also spoke with you know with professionals about his role as well just to make sure it tracked 
So as I said, I'm really glad that you raised that you worked with our friends at GLAD, AA GLAD. They're um, they're so good on this. We we work with yeah. them a lot, and you know, representation is important. So the fact that you also specifically you know sought out you know someone you know Sasha, you know yeah. someone yeah. who is a wonderful actor who could play the role, who is trans, who understood the experience. You know, it's so it's so important and really you know to do it the right way. It, it's so. Yeah, well, it's also just, it just seemed like a no brainer and bad filmmaking not to do that. I mean, I, I felt like it's such a specific experience for a kid to be having. How could a cisgender kid understand that? You know, I appreciate it. you say that it's a no brainer, but as we all know, that right, is not, I know. Necessarily, <laughs> yeah, it's not necessarily the case. Right. So it's a brainer, Anna, actually. It is, it is a brain, I guess. <laughs> we all use our brains. <laughs> so my question to each of you now, two two questions, flip side of the coin. What was a favorite soon? Shh, I really, we're gonna try that again. Even though it's live, I don't get another take. What was your favorite <laughs> scene to shoot? And what was maybe one of the harder scenes to shoot? For each of I'm, you. I'm gonna let you guys go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll go first. So my favorite scene to shoot was definitely the one in the Western wear store. And I, yeah, that was the best, my favorite scene. <laughs> and then I think the most difficult scene to shoot, um, I would say just by thinking and then also how we did it would got to be the one in the river. Technically difficult. Technically difficult. And by, yeah. And by the way, Sasha, <laughs> we did put Sasha and Steve in the river, but we did not make them go down the river. Okay. Yeah. Those were stunt people. No <laughs> actors were harmed in the making of this film. I don't okay. think. Good. No, maybe. It's good. No, anyway. <laughs> You're not doing that. What are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> the stunt Steve, people didn't even want to do it. <laughs> no one wanted to do that. So that was all CGI. Is that what you're saying? No, it was it was whatever. That's like another sure. story that Cold water. <laughs> I'll yeah. put in my memoir. Right. <laughs> I loved I loved all that. Look, I you know, I'm attracted to things, to movies that are outside that are are, you know rugged in the woods in the snow i i just love that um to me it's like being 10 years old and it represents being in a movie you know if you're on a, a lot somewhere it gets boring so all the stuff that 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 first couple of weeks that we shot up in the in the hills was in the mountains were, it was great i mean i loved every one of those days whenever we were on horseback and doing all that even the little tiny scenes we were just you know, meandering down a trail. That stuff to me was great. Um, as far as hard, um, I mean, there were some really heavy scenes that we had to do that were really, and you know, this was a this was a small movie. This wasn't, you know, we didn't have a ton of time, so we had to nail it, and we had it. We had to, you know, deal with, you know, shortcomings and not having enough people, and and but that's what makes these great too. At the same time, I mean. You know, you don't have the luxury of time and money. Right. So yeah. It, decisions yeah. fast and, and you know, it makes it kind of crazy, but it's great. You know? And can also spur on creativity. You know, exactly. lack, lack of funds drives you to be creative. And this movie captures a beautifully intimate, small story expansively. Like it just it's a huge movie with this very intimate story at the center of it. And I, you struck a really beautiful balance and I have to commend you. Um, like I said, I've watched it twice and we work on a lot of movies. I don't watch them all twice. They did watch this one. Twice, so thank you. So, um, so I see. We have I love how you both like this dog is like, my like around. That's I, I keep hoping she's and not she's doing like, it. And, it. and then your your dog and like <laughs> so chill. I know. She's just like totally now she's looking at me. She like knows. Have you done? Yeah, you. exactly. Where's your dog, Sasha? Uh he's in the other room. All right, well. Yeah, I don't have my dog wranglers here. Usually I have my kids right. here and they're wrangling the dog. Oh. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm flying solo and it could go horribly awry any moment. So um, I realize we only have like a minute left and I want to ask all of you this question, which is what do you hope people take away from this film? Uh, one thing that I talked about a bit, we didn't really talk a lot about Sally, the mom character, um, but I think she's someone who, you know, her own ego, her projections of what she thinks her ch child should be like, of what she thinks their family should be like, really get in the way of her accepting her kid. So, I mean, I think for parents, just for any person watching the film, I hope that they walk away examining, you know, who am I judging? Who am I projecting my expectations on in a way that's, that is ruining our, <laughs> our relationship? You know, we really limit other people by not accepting where they are in the moment. Thank you. Sasha, Steve. I'll go. Um, I hope that, <laughs> um, <laughs> I hope that kids, especially transgender kids, just see that they should just love and just be their self. And that, yes, there's going to be people that um, don't accept them. Let's call them haters. <laughs> and there's always going to be like people that do. So just look for the people that do and ignore the people that don't. We'll take that. I second that. Hard <laughs> <laughs> to answer that one as an actor, I gotta tell you. But that was good. Thanks. Yeah, and for those who aren't, so you know, we we don't really talk a lot about haters at P Flag because our hope is that we can, you know, really meet people where they are and bring them along and meet people, you know, if they are in fear or not understanding to just meet them with facts and bring them along in this journey. And uh, I'm really grateful to all three of you for this movie because I personally, one of my favorite parts of working at PFLAG is working on partnerships with, uh, with films and television shows because media can be a really powerful tool for good. And this film is gonna help change a lot of hearts and minds. Um, it really is so beautiful work and thank you for 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 creating such a beautiful piece that i really think is going to make a difference in the world thank you so much awesome. thank, thank you. you thank you all for being here and all of you out there thank you for being with us and um everybody stay safe wear your masks distance be outside when you can and uh, love the people in your life have a good night everybody thanks for being here good night good night, good night all <laughs> 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 <laughs>